Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. We're sitting behind the wheels of the BMW 330e. So this is going to be a quick review this week. I was kind of surprised when BMW called me and told, hey, do you want to test drive the E version of the 3 Series? And I said to myself, what's an E version? Well, it's a plug-in hybrid. You've got the same great road and link of the 3 Series. And you've got this car that adds some electrical components, electrical engine, and you can plug plug it in to charge the car. So really impressive. Still with the design, when you look at the car, it's sexy as all the other Model 3. You've got that sublime look, you've got the package M that we added, and you've got that ground effect all around the car, the front bumper, which is different, the wheels, massive wheels, I love the look of those ones, and even around the windows, it's all black. But be careful with the paint, with the nice purple color that we have, it seems to be fragile, and you've got a lot of swirls, so use the proper product when you're gonna take care of that BMW of yours. I receive a lot of thumbs up during the week for the look of the car and I'm almost sure that nobody knew that I was driving a hybrid plug-in car. Well, maybe those who spotted the cap or even the mention E-Drive right there on the side or behind me with the E mention. But even that, I'm not sure. They like the car. That's about it. When you look inside the BMW, it's all classy. You've got a great use of material. The mix of the color is really awesome. Even the seats, really nice firm holding. You've got a lot of place inside. You've got that nice screen, which is full of technology. You need to take time and learn the multimedia system, how it works. But still, you're going to see it's really impressive. The resolution is impressive the rear view camera when it's turned on you can see really clearly and you've got all the owner's manual inside phone connectivity hybrid technology inside and you can even use that knob right here to go through the menu and you're going to see it's fast you need to take time to learn every feature that you're going to see though inside that system you've got that unique shifter really classy with all the use of those material and you've got a knee drive button way down there that you can switch a different mode besides that classical bmw with the big dial right here in the center but a lot of comfort for you and your passenger when it's going to come to the engine well you're going to have the best of both worlds because it's going to be the fusion between the bmw e-drive technology and the bmw twin power turbo engine so it's a 2.0 liter turbocharged and intercooler dohc 16 valves and it's going to be good for 180 horsepower and 215 pound feet of torque that's not impressive but Thanks to the hybrid components, we add a permanent magnet synchronous AC electric motors, and it's going to be good for 87 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. So, with the combined power, 248 and 310 pound feet of torque. So, we're right there with the power to compete against some fast cars out there. The engine will have a 7,000 RPM red line, and using premium fuel is recommended. For the battery, 7.6 kilowatt hours lithium ion battery pack. And you've got a range which is about 40 kilometers with the car. But we were not able to hit that exact range in pure electrical mode. So let's talk about charging power. With the BMW iWall box charging power of 3.7 kilowatts, you're gonna be able to full your energy in two hours, 27 minutes. On those regular charging station, three hours. And if you plug yourself in your regular home outlets, you've got all the components needed in the truck to do so, it's gonna be around seven hours to get a complete charge. The transmission is at eight speed with manual shifting mode and this is not an all-wheel drive car this is a rear wheel drive car when it's going to come to road and link you will have the possibility to change the reaction of the car with the drive mode that you have here you can switch from eco normal sports and sportless and it's going to change the reaction of the direction it's going to change the reaction of the acceleration and it's going to also maximize the use of the engine and the hybrid system depending on what you choose the gear will also be really fast to change when you're going to be in sports plus mode. You've got also three different modes that you can choose with the e-drive button right here. You've got the auto e-drive which is a balance setup that you will use in everyday driving. You've got the maxi drive mode that you can choose. This is the car electric
electric power only, which is going to draw only the power from your battery. So the engine won't really help unless you really step on it at maximum power. You will have a top speed of 120 kilometers with that system. And the last mode is the safe battery mode. So you probably guessed it, it's going to only use the regular engine and you will be able to save your power for later use. You've got also a BMW connected drive system which is going to assist the driver to get the better efficiency possible with the car. It's going to use the navigation system and the driving habits of the driver. So let's say that you're doing some city, it's going to mainly focus on pure electric drive. But if you see a hill ahead, the system system will give you maximum power because on the other side it will know that you will use the regenerative force to get back some power in the battery by rolling down slowly in this hill. Acceleration are kind of impressive with that car. They are quick and you've got a great transition between the regular engine and the hybrid power. Sometimes in other car you can feel some vibration, it can be harsh sometimes, but really in the BMW you don't feel nothing, it's always there to react. 8-speed transmission which is doing a great job when it's going to come to shifting. In normal or eco mode you don't feel it and in sports plus mode with the manual paddles, there you go, you will feel the road and you will own it. BMW gave us some numbers, 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.1 seconds and a top speed of 225 km. The direction is a perfect mix of communication and if you wanted more when you go into the sports mode, you will feel it a little bit heavier, but that's what we like when we enter or exit the curves. And while we're going to do some parking maneuvers, go back to normal mode and it's going to be really easy. You've got the suspension, which is once again well balanced. That's probably the words that comes to my mind with all those features. Remember that you have a weight repartition of 50-50. That's once again rare with some hybrid component system. Brakes are not bad, they feel precise, they feel stable, but the braking distances will be a little bit longer when you compare it to the other Model 3 series. Also, there's not a lot of braking regenerative force in other cars. You can press on a button or enable a paddle and you will be able to do some one pedal driving, but this is not the case with the BMW. I would have loved to do that because sometimes you want to maximize the hybrid, the power, the energy that you're going to store in your battery. The Comfort is BMW approved in front, in the rear, the equipment, everything is there to make you roll in great comfort out there. Fuel efficiency is way impressive with that car. I was surprised because I drove it hard during all the week, but BMW told us that you can get between 6.9 and 8.5 liter per 100. And if you want to check the electrical consumption kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, 29.5. In reality, we did way better than that, between five and six liter per 100 kilometers. And believe me, we didn't slow down for any Anybody, but we did plug each time that we could to get that great number. When it's going to be time to compare, there's a lot of car out there that will bring hybrid version either this year or in 2018. And the first one to receive a makeover is the Acura RLX. So for 2018, completely redesigned with 377 horsepower when you go for the hybrid version. It's not one of the most sold car out there. I don't know, buyers don't go for this one. Still, it's sharing a lot of technology with the NSX. It's even stronger when you compare the regular version versus the hybrid version. So why not go for it? Because in those price range, I'm pretty sure that you like performance. We will have the chance soon to try out this car. But even if you go for an older version, it doesn't have the styling, the aggressiveness of the BMW, but it's sure going to give you strong acceleration and great fuel efficiency. The Audi A3 e-tron Sportback for 2018, the Audi A3 will receive only minor change to the trim level feature and option package content. It's more affordable than the BMW 330e, 25 kilometers pure electric drive. This is not impressive. It's less sportier than the car that we are in right now. But if you like a blend styling, if you like a car that will cost you less money, you might think about this one. Cadillac is also entering hybrid technology with the CT6. 
48 kilometers autonomy. You've got more standard equipment when you choose the hybrid package. It's only going to be rear wheel drive, just like our BMW. And the battery took a lot of place in the trunk because of its size. It's fast and you're going to be capable to do some one pedal driving because you finally got the button that I would like to have right there in the BMW. The Infiniti Q50 is also offered as an hybrid version. You've got the combined output of 360 horsepower and a 1.4 kilowatt lithium ion battery, which is not really big. So forget about pure electric mode driving here. You've got a seven speed transmission. The look is sporty and classy. You've got a lot of power when it comes to Infiniti, finally. But the feeling of the steering is not that great and the transmission will sometimes lack the precision of the BMW. When it comes to the Lexus, well, Toyota technology hybrid since 1999, 2000 year with the Prius, and now nearly every Lexus had a hybrid version. So we're going to talk about the GS 450H. For this year, they added the Lexus Safety System Plus, and it's one of the most fuel efficient luxury sedan which is available. Acceleration is still strong, but not as strong as the BMW. It's one of the most reliable car out there, and Lexus has an hybrid for every vehicle choice that you get the bigger ones and even the smaller ones another luxury brand that will enter the hybrid territory is Lincoln with the MKZ it's really affordable when you compare it to the regular version it doesn't have a lot of power though it's kind of surprising that they choose to give the car not a lot of horsepower acceleration are not going to be great at all it's also going to be noisy inside but if you love road and link versus comfort go for the bmw or if you like the ultimate comfort go for the lincoln you've got a mercedes-benz c-class which is also offered as an hybrid version the plug-in version but not everywhere you're gonna have a combined power rating of 275 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque. This is major torque when it's gonna come to acceleration. The battery, 6.2 kilowatt hours lithium ion battery pack. Seven speed automatic transmission with manual shifting mode. And you will also have the Eco Comfort, the Sports and Sportless mode. So the great battle of the German cars is right there. So which one? The BMW, the MB? I don't know. You decide in the comment section down there below. Another contender, the SN90 T8 will be a plug-in version. The look is totally European styling, Swedish styling. 87 horsepower electric motors to the T6 engine for a combined output of 400 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque. This is one of the most performant on papers, but acceleration sometimes seems a little bit slow for 400 horsepower. The technology is really complex though, because you mix supercharged engine, turbocharged engine, hybrid, so I don't know how well it will evolve over time. Is it going to be reliable with all those technology? That's going to have to be seen, so expect another video in a few years for the reality of those Volvo cars. If you're not looking for luxury, you cannot go wrong if you choose a Chevrolet Volt. Now I'm seeing them everywhere on the road. 80 kilometers, pure electric autonomy, and you will have the possibility to plug it in. So when it's going to come to the plus and minus points of the BMW 330e, you don't have a lot of pure electrical autonomy power. So 40 kilometers, but in reality, I was able only to do less than that, 25, maybe 28 sometimes. Might depends on my still of driving though, but I think it could use a more aggressive regenerative setting. How about some one pedal driving by pressing on a pedal here where the car would simply brake without using the regular brake and put back a lot of energy right there in the battery. During winter, when it comes to rear wheel drive car, it's not that great. You will need some really aggressive tires. How about some studded tires? Feel free to check the video that we did about those tires. You will need maximum traction when you're going to be on a patch of ice. And finally, I saw this comment on certain social network. How about the car reacted 
to really low temperature. The electrical wouldn't help. You even had the display saying that it was not available. How about that? So I have not been able to test the car in really low temperature in cold in ice, but feel free to comment if you have one about that point, which I'm kind of impressed right now to see all over the network. So keep us informed in the comment section. On the plus side though, performance is there. The fuel economy is really impressive with the car. You've got a really fast car, even if it's an hybrid version. It doesn't look like an hybrid plug-in version. It's really looking sexy. You've got great road handling, you've got technology, and if you want, you press on the button and you can have pure electric mode to go wherever you want to go. So how about Mads Green? It's gonna be an A+. So you've got great performance technology that you already know that BMW had, but how about discovering that hybrid technology? Because not a lot of people knows that BMW has some impressive stuff in that segment. So what do you think about that, folks? Feel free to comment that in the section down there below. Also do a thumbs up because you like that video and subscribe to Car Question because we will have more just for you, the passionate about cars. Take care.